So welcome to 2021. I remember being here a year ago and saying, it's 2020. This is going to be the best year ever. And I wish I had never, ever <laughs> said that because it just went downhill from there. But here we are, social distancing, sitting in groups, and we're ready to see the 2021 line, which I'm very, very excited to share with you. So let's start with Snow Village. Snow Village is 45 years old. We share a birthday. I'm kidding. <laughs> this year, in honor of the 45th anniversary, we decided to bottom stamp all the buildings in Snow Village with a sapphire blue bottom stamp. Typically, it's a black bottom stamp that lists Department 56, the name of the piece, etc. But this year, it'll be a logo in your catalogs similar to this, just for this year. All right. So the first new piece I'm going to share with you, and Stefan's going to give his little uh, feelings because he does our showroom, so he got to see the pieces up close and from all different sides. So if I'm missing something, my sidekick will help me out. That's right. So the first new piece is the Woodlands Family Church. This is a wonderful new kind of a stone church. If you saw this piece from the other angle, there's a really nice stained glass window that you can see in the catalog, and there's wreaths on the three windows in front. Yeah, that side over here is probably your, your highlight. And when I put the light in there in Atlanta, the light actually shone through the, the bell tower, which was pretty cool. I don't know if that's normal, <laughs> because the sample pieces sometimes are a little different, but I think it was made like that, with, so it really glows and it's really, really nice. But the stained, win the stained glass windows are great. A very nice touch. Okay. So next we have the Reindeer Run gas station. This is a nice significant piece. You can actually have a car pulling up to pump gas and the accessory I think is really, really fun. It's a dipstick, Billy. And I love the name of the piece. I love the lights on the piece, the tinsel on the piece, and the details on it are really, really strong too. Yeah, there's details all around that piece, which sometimes you look at the back of the building and you're like, oh, it's too bad nobody sees this, because there's great details. And this string of lights actually lights up, so it's really bright and nice. It's a big piece. It is um, a big piece. And today we're going to show a display that's actually kind of in that theme. So I'll be, we'll talk about that. All right. So the Wild Wild West. This piece will do really, really well in Texas, as we well know. But the hitching post, where you buy your Western gear, and we've got Santa dressed up as a cowboy being lassoed by his young friend. Um, the boots on the building are three-dimensional. They stick out a little bit. They're not decaled. And then you've got the little cowboy hat sign, reeds on the windows, which is a nice touch. And I just love this. I like mm -hmm. the footprint because yeah. sometimes in Snow Village you get big footprints. This one maybe is 4x4, four 4x5. By four, four by Jody's so walking around with it. So catching the Christmas spirit is the accessory that goes with it. All right, so we've had a series of these fish shacks. And this is the next one. Very cute. The Cracker Box snacks. You can see all the foods they serve up on their sign. And the father and his son... Um, have finished their uh, ice fishing for the day so he's telling him to save some room for fish sticks and this piece again there's just great detail going around I love the tinsel and lights on it and it's the next in the series yep. okay my favorite though is the new lot 60 Christmas court we've done a series of these trailer home car um, trailer home pieces this one, it's kind of hard to tell, but you've actually got a little um, awning that comes off filled with cardinals. We've done a lot with cardinals in the general accessories this year, too. And the gal, her fine feathered friends, is so fun. She's got the bird on her head, the bird next to her. But this building, again, has great detail going all the way around. And what everybody said in Atlanta in person when they saw it is they loved that little white awning coming off mm -hmm. the side. It just made it different than the ones we've done before. Yeah, I think that series started at lot 56, right? And it then, did. So if you're lucky enough to have the other ones, it's a great, it's a great set. A little hard to find if you don't have it though. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so Christmas Lane. We always talk about Christmas Lane being the street where everybody's competing with each other to do the best Christmas display on the front of their home. And I know on my street this year, <coughs> people were bored from being home and they went out and our street never looked so good. In fact, some of them still have left it up because they just spent so much time doing it, they didn't want to take it down. Yeah. So Scott Enner, who's our Snow Village artist, came up with the idea of doing a Peanuts house. Now, I, for one, live for Peanuts. If I could have Snoopy as my dog, I would. <laughs> so to do a Peanuts house, I'm not a Snow Village collector, but I will own this piece. We have an area in San Diego called Christmas Card Lane where people actually do wood cutouts and they paint them and it's called Christmas Card Lane because everybody has picked a different theme. There is a Peanuts house there where they have the dog house, they have all the characters singing. We actually bought the cutouts to do them ourselves. I don't know who's going to paint them because I certainly can't do it. But that's what those accessories are like. So they're ceramic. They're like the width of a cookie, but they're also set in billowy snow to look like they would be in front of a home. And I'm so sorry, because I'm blocked and I can't see you, so I hope you can hear me okay. But this piece, in person, it doesn't photograph as well, but the LED lights that are in the eaves of the, the roof line shine down. The house itself is adorable. And then there's a three-dimensional accessory called It's Good Old Charlie Brown, where they're building a snowman, and he looks like Charlie Brown to go with it. But those accessory pieces come with the house. <coughs> and it's adorable. All right. OK, so welcome to Christmas Lane. So we love Christmas Lane. We want a nice, big, beautiful entrance now to Christmas Lane. And this piece is large. It, it looks small in the catalog, just the way they photographed it, but it's nice and big. And this would be, if you're setting up all your Christmas lane, this would be just a wonderful entrance way to go in. And especially now having a real standout like the Peanuts House, I think it's really fun now that we have a lit gate. Um, the little snowman says, lights on at 5.30, lights off at 10.30, I believe. Um, and then the, the trees do light up, so it's quite fun. Yeah. And then we have a baby's first Christmas. How many people do you know right now that are pregnant? I know tons. So uh -huh. we're going to have a big baby's first year in 2021, I'm sure. So we now have a great accessory to acknowledge that. And this piece is the reason why here in Snow Village we're going to move Christmas Lane into that town area that we currently have so that all the Christmas lanes are together and we have the big Entrance, entrance to it, so mm -hmm. it'll be kind of nice when you do that. Okay, so this is an accessory in Snow Village that we did to remember one of our artists. There's a little write up about her in the catalog. She passed away um, last year with a long battle with cancer. And if you watch our Facebook Lives, you did see that Melinda showed this early on last year, so that it was kind of a sneak peek. Um, she had a love of painting animals, so she's actually painting a horse. Um, but I just, I love that we've honored her by doing an accessory for her. She was our North Pole and Dickens accessory artist for a very, very long time. All right, so Santa Comes to Town 2021. So originally, I think this was slated to have red or green Christmas balls, but we changed it to the sapphire blue Christmas balls in honor of the 45th anniversary. And then we've got the 2021 there at the bottom on the gifts, and this tree will light up. And this is our annual piece we do every year. Okay, so Christmas vacation is still huge. I mean, whatever our stores buy, they sell out of, it's like french fries, you know? If you have an extra large fry, you're going to eat them all, right? So the platinum piece for this year, it's an early release, is Clark's End Run. And if you've seen the movie and he gets on that saucer and he's gaining speed and right before he crashes, there's actual sparks coming out of the bottom. So we duplicated that by doing the little fiber optics there so it looks like the sparks and there he is smashing into the building. So it's a bigger accessory. It's probably about this big at the base. Mm -hmm. 
and this will be out a little bit later. It will not be out in March because it's not for everyone this year. It will be out more in the summertime. All right, Country Living is a license that we took on last year. So we did some remakes of some old building styles. This is the Pleasant View Church. So it's, it lives in Snow Village, but it's branded under Country Living. Just a nice white, pretty church with the bows on the, the garland. All right, let's move on to Dickens. <laughs> All right. So we're done with Twelfth Night. We're done with Twelfth Night, but we're done with a stunning piece. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. This is absolutely stunning. Tom Bates is our new um, architect, as I like to call it, for Dickens. And I think he's done a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, he took over from Barb Lund, and his pieces are stunning and beautiful. And he just does this type of work really, really well. He's also our city mm -hmm. artist. So the Royal Corps of Drums is the final piece, and it's a great final piece. And the accessory drummer's drumming is just perfect. And in my world, you need more than one set of drummer's drumming. I think you need one for each side, because I think they're just, <coughs> just wonderful. If you look at the detail, we've got the, drummer, the drums with the trees in them at the front steps, reeds on the windows. And there's just even a little side portion to that building that's just really, really nice. And the roof line is really detailed. Yep, and we've got the flag on top. So I'm very excited about that, as is Sucretion. Okay, so we've got the old Pancras Church, and I just have a few little notes on that. This is a parish church in Somerstown, which is in central London. It's the oldest site of Christian worship in England, and it may date back to the 1500s. And somebody had posted on Facebook that the Beatles actually took a photo in front of this church for one of their album covers. So if you like the Beatles, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then we've got the Hardy Ash Tree. And that's got a story behind it, too. You can, of course, Google this and read about it. There's tons of information. But basically, the Hardy Tree stands in St. Pacras Old Burial Ground, where in 1865, tombstones were piled together and created an interesting landmark. And I think I remember they moved the tombstones to create roads, and there was a circular way they would put them around the trees. So that's the hardy ash. All right, this is stunning. It's Oxford's Radcliffe camera. And again, this area is a focal point at Oxford University. The name camera is the Latin word for room. So this is the most famous part of Oxford University. And again, Tom Bates is just so good at getting I'm in Oxford, and that is that is spot on. Yeah. Oh, you've been there. I've been Oxford yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, <coughs> listen to her. It's spot on. <laughs> spot on. I mean, Tom Bates is amazing in his ability to replicate things. I agree. And then you've got the Oxford professor and student as the coordinating accessory. And of course, it does come with the Radcliffe camera sign. And ideally for this piece and the church, and actually all the Dickens buildings, you'd want to set them up as a, as a center display, like on a table that you can see all around, because it's really pretty all around. So it, it's better than against a wall if you can afford it. But on a centerpiece, they're just, just amazing. Sue will make it happen, I know. <laughs> Okay, so we have our Trader Joe's for Dickens. <laughs> Cotswold is actually in South London. And again, this is just a darling little grocery store. We haven't had one for quite some time. We had the Three French Hens Market. Um, but again, there's more than one store in town, right? And the, the Day's Fresh Produce is the accessory that goes with she's got her basket of things that she's purchased in her arms. All right, so what do we say every year? Pubs, <laughs> dogs, all sell. So we have a new pub for Dickens. It's the Chelsea on the Thames pub. I like this because it's a seaside pub. So you've been out fishing all day, time to go get your ale. You walk up the stairs and there you're at your pub. 
And if you don't care for the pub, the accessory on its own for your seaside portion of Dickens is really, really good. And it's preparing for tomorrow's catch. A lot of detail going on in there because he's a fisherman. All right, this is my all-time favorite piece for Dickens this year because I am such a dog lover. And it's the Battersea, the dog's home. Again, if you want to read about Battersea, Google it. Battersea is located in southwest London. It's a dog and cat and animal shelter, and it's been around since 1860. Um, I was working with the owners of City Lights, and they're from the UK, and they said, oh, this is very, very famous. Everybody knows about Battersea. And the accessory, I mean, we named it perfectly, Man's Best Friends. A lot of people got pregnant this year, a lot of people got a dog this year because they would be home to train that dog. That little gate is pretty cool because you have like a little entrance there and the light shines through again. So you want to display that so you can really see the front. So it's a famous dog shelter. All right, so you can read that about Charles Dickens and Edgar Allan Poe on the screen. This is kind of a one-off accessory, but we've been asked to do something Edgar Allan Poe. So here you go. Hi, darling. Hello, oh, hi. So grip inspires Poe is when the two, uh, the two met on the first trip Dickens made to the U.S. in 1842. Okay, so Christmas Carol. Last year we did Charles Dickens' boyhood home, or sorry, Scrooge's boyhood home. This year we have visiting the miners' home. So we're sort of doing a series of these that take those periods of the story and recreate them with a new with a new piece. All right, let's move to Alpine. So how many people heard that Alpine is retiring this year? How many people didn't know? Okay. So we are going to go ahead and retire Alpine in November. Sad, um, but it's lived its life. And just like with New England, if something inspires us to do, we'll always go back. There's always that door we can walk back through. But at this point, the launch <clears throat> and whatever's in the catalog will be available this year. And then we're going to go ahead and retire it. So the clock shop, we've done other clock shops, no doubt. That's a very German thing. Mm -hmm. um, the little characters up in the top don't move, but that's good because they won't break, right? <laughs> and, but they're, but they're set in a position as if they had just, you know, yeah. spun. Mm -hmm. And then the accessory with the wagon I love is just in time delivery. But that, the detail on that is stunning. The hands on the clock are not decaled, they're actual little metal hands, which is a nice touch. The clock doesn't work because it's always five to six, right? Right. <laughs> All right, last year we did Omas. We had a lot of uh, people ask us to do Omas. Oma means grandmother, and I can't say this right, but it's supposed to go Opa, I think. I said it the other day and somebody said I had the wrong syllable going, so it's Opa, I guess. <laughs> And that's grandfathers. <laughs> and I love the little antlers up at the top. And now you've got two pieces that can sit side by side. And the Bavarian Trail Guide is just a really perfect accessory to go with this. Could be grandpa, could be just walking by grandpa's house. Yeah. He's great with his dog. <clears throat> All right, Christmas in the city. So we have a new fire station. And I was talking to Tom, and I said, why Engine Company 31? You know, we're all about 5 and 6 and 6 and 5. And he said, well, this is actually a replica of a fire station in Chicago. It's no longer a fire station. It might be a restaurant or another kind of business right now, but that's what he replicated it from. So it's a beautiful building to be a fire station. Then you've got the new engine. And you can't call them a fire truck. If you know a firefighter, my daughter's marrying one, you never call these a fire truck. They are a fire engine. So I have to rethink what I say. Mm -hmm. So then you've got the engine. And then we have two skin tones on our firefighters, which we've been asked to do more and more. So we have two skin tones available um, in the accessories. Hey, no time to play with the Dalmatian. 
Le Chow's German restaurant, um, I think is great for, you know, kind of the Soho district of New York. And the accessory, it's kind of hard to tell, but years ago they used to, when you take your leftovers, they'd make them into a foil animal. So that's sort of what that's supposed to be reminiscent of. Yeah. And if you read the history of that restaurant okay. online too, it's pretty impressive. It was around for like a hundred years and it's just, just great. Is it still open? No. Okay. All right. So if you were out this year at Target or some of the different stores, Macy's, you know, FAO is kind of making a comeback. And FAO used to be the toy store to go to if you visited one of the big cities. They had made the movie big, you know, around FAO and the piano scene and all of that. So we were approached by FAO to, or maybe we approached them, so I'm not sure. But to do some FAO product. We've done FAO throughout all of the lines in UNESCO in addition to Village. So there's a lot of product that we've done to back this licensing up. This is my favorite building for the city this year. I remember going to Chicago and New York and just that feeling of walking into this toy store where you had the Barbie land and you had, I mean, everything was big and huge and amazing. So the soldier is an icon for FAO. And so we have the little girl in her red coat, you know, saluting like we did on, what was the piece that had the rotating, the subway station that mm -hmm. had the yep. rotating door, that door will rotate. So if you push it, it'll spin around. And again, the clock is set at five to six, but those are real metal hands, which is a nice thing that we did on that. And again, this is a Tom Bates piece. He didn't miss a detail, and it's just beautiful. All right, so now we are up to our fifth skyscraper, which is the Woolworth Building. And you can see there the Woolworth, Woolworth Building is an early American skyscraper designed by Cass Gilbert, built in 1913. Beauty has been an important part of the New York skyline for over a hundred years. And I just giggle when I see the name of the accessory because how much breaking news have we had in a year? <laughs> Every 10 seconds there's breaking news. Now the back of this piece is what I put in the front when I was in Atlanta because I thought it was the front. It's got this kind of courtyard thing in the back so oh, wow. that's another piece that you'd want to see all around if you can. And they do have a way to light it so yes. that the lights shine all the way up to the top. Yep. All right, so the suffragettes, rise up women, celebrating women being able to vote. <clears throat> all right, so we are in the 20th year of 9-11. Who didn't just kind of get a chill from that? This is a day we will never forget. So, we decided to memorialize this in some products throughout our company. In the villages, you know, we have a series called American Pride, but we haven't done anything for quite some time. But there's a lot of people that have those pieces, and they love them. So we have two pieces here. <clears throat> we have the Twin Towers Memorial, and they stand about this tall. They were not designed to go in the city to be big like our skyscraper pieces. They're, they are the right size for what they need to be. And the heartfelt valor is stunning. I mean, you remember watching the news and seeing these firefighters and policemen and what they were going through. And so just the, the tired look on their face and them dressed up for what they've gone through. I mean, this is just a beautiful memorial to the 9-11 20th anniversary this year. Oh, you know, that we kind of put that in the front as well, but it's really, really nice to see it just, it just is the right size it needs to be in this accessory is cool in the city too, if you want it. Yeah, the accessory's really, really, good, really good. Okay, North Pole. How many people collect North Pole? You're gonna be broke. <laughs> or you're going to start North Pole. I know, but you're, the, the launch for North Pole is, is truly my favorite this year. Okay, so this is the first one, Kringle's Christmas tree display. And 
Everybody's always a little, eh, it's got blue, but it's okay. This piece has four LED lights up in the um, inside of the, yeah. of the piece, and they flash. So they flash just enough to really catch your eye and show off this great right. tree that's in the window. It's not like a strobe, it's more of a Yeah, it's just kind of flash. a gentle yeah. flash. Yeah. And then the accessory that goes with it just in time for Christmas, the little elf is helping his friend deliver a tree. I Be love still that my heart. <laughs> Be still my heart. So last year we started this little gingerbread lane. And many of our collectors asked us to return to doing gingerbread. You too. <laughs> and they finally listened and they did it. So we did Ginger's Cottage last year, which did right amazingly well. Yeah. And so the second in the series now is the gingerbread cookie mill. So if you set up a cute little vignette in your kitchen, this is just so cute. So it is animated. Um, and then you've got your little um, elf carrying the big bags of flour. But the detail on this is just adorable. I mean, they've got the icing, they've got the gingerbread cookie out front. And we've got a new set of gingerbread lights when we go further in that you'll see yep. that'll just like pathway. this and a pathway. So yeah. we're we're moving and shaking on this gingerbread lane deal. And it rotates. And it yes. rotates, yep, yeah. it's animated, sure. All right, so nutcrackers. Nutcrackers are big. Nutcrackers are big in North Pole. And this piece um, is animated. So the little nutcracker will spin around. But it's the accessory. I always got my favorites. And this accessory is truly one of my favorites because the detail they were able to get on that little, it's hard to see here. You can tell better in the catalog. But the nutcracker's face is just wonderful. And I love that this little elf felt he needed to look like a nutcracker. So he's got, you know, the same little hat. And the nuts are in the little bucket on the side. But this accessory is so, so cute. Plus, if you have the old piece, right. it'll go great with that. That's right. OK. Yay! So who doesn't like pizza? So we did an accessory for North Pole years ago that had pizza elves, but they had no pizza restaurant. It made no sense. So after many, many years, and after many, many requests, Paul Lundberg did the cutest pizza place around. So what I love about this piece is <clears throat> the way where the pizza is being cooked. You know, it's a little wood-fired oven. You've got that little flame going on in there. Um, but it looks tiled. And then all the way around the building, they've got darling, darling accessories, whether it's the sauce or the pizza boxes or the pizza slice, you know, little sign. But how cute is this? He's throwing the dough up in the air, you know? I absolutely love that. So it's one Santa special coming up, but I think this is going to do really, 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 really well. It's so cute. Yeah. The flickering mm -hmm. flame, I mean, this, yeah. you can really it, see it, it this night. Nice. Yeah. So, you can't appreciate this one until you see it in person. We did Crayola before. This is not a new license to us, but they did come to us and wanted us to, you know, partner with them on some products. So, again, as a company, we put this in many different things. So, again, Paul Lundberg did this piece. It is clean as a whistle. I don't know how else to say it. Those crayons look like you could just take them right out and start <laughs> coloring with them. They look so real. They almost feel waxy. I mean, truly. They, they just, it's amazing. But this part here is animated. So it goes around. Any mom that I know or grandmother that I know who's seen my catalog, their kids are nuts after this piece. They want this piece. So it's very, very good. Uh, again, if you look at it up close, the detail, you, you see that he made the building sort of look like the crayon mm -hmm. box. Paul is so gifted on not missing a notch whenever he does a piece from all sides. And then we've got That's a Wrap, where this little guy's job is to roll the crayons, right? Get the wrappers on the crayons. And just so you know, Crayola is a Hallmark brand. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying this, you're also helping Hallmark. So you should buy two. <laughs> um, and every year in Atlanta, I break a piece really good, 
This was a piece I broke. Did you break the black? I broke the whole thing. It was just. Well, the uh, reason why is that black <laughs> crayon was kind of leaning, and I'm like, that just doesn't look right. But yep, I took it to the hotel and had, had some fun, it back put it back together. But okay. yes, it glues really well. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a great piece. <laughs> All right, so Disney. Um, Disney has its own village, right? But we also bring Disney into North Pole sometimes when it makes sense. We can't retire the Mickey's Ears Factory because it's so good. Now, I say that, and this year it'll probably retire, but that's one of our longest pieces. That one's been around since 2011. So Mickey's stuffed animals is so fun. I love Mickey up on top of the roof. I like Minnie sitting in the windowsill, and then the accessory is the little um, guy carrying Pluto. Goofy. Yeah, Pluto. 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 And this little stuffing thing actually looks like the little stuffing. It's really like well done. Oh. Yeah. Very cute. All right. So if you are a crafter or you like the whole sewing thing that we did before, we've now got Nina's Knit Mittens. And when you see this in person, it's so neat because they were able to actually get the knitted look into the, the ceramic. Um, cute little sign knitting needles out the front door but again you know how well our pets do so the little ball of yarn with a kitten is very very good okay <clears throat> Harry Potter so Harry Potter is still going strong I always have to look at yeah. you so there's two new buildings and two new accessories so we have Honey Dukes Honey Dukes popular sweet shop in Hogsmeade um, how is that different than Diagon Alley? Can you explain that to me? Well, Diagon Alley is more in the city. Okay. So, so this really us, wouldn't go in Diagon Alley. No, this and Hog... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, the, the snow actually goes... Yes, tells you that it goes yeah. with the other... Yeah. Okay. Where Hogsmeade is, yeah. Yeah. Because okay. it's, it's more that they get snow there. And, and does the runaway lollipop make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. in the movie. I just haven't Neville's seen. sitting there eating okay, his lollipop, right. and Harry's got his invisibility cloak on, and <laughs> okay. he takes off. <laughs> so it works. That's yeah. all I need Our to consultant hear. here. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have trust me. I know. They do. I agree. Do they have one? Or they don't? We do not have one yet, but I will definitely pass that idea Yeah. Okay. The boathouse, though, this I do understand. So this is the starting point for all students to travel to Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. So you've got Harry and Ron and the boat as the accessory. So this would kind of go a little off your main pieces, right? Yes. Okay. All right, Christmas Story. Christmas Story just has one new intro, which is the Holman Bowling Center. Um, this is really cute. I mean, it says Indiana's, right, because it's part of the story, but it is just a cute little bowling alley, and then you've got the bowling ball humor accessory to go with it. All right, this is my favorite. Yes. In this entire <laughs> book is the Halloween um, for yes. Disney. Mm -hmm. So if you've been to Disneyland, over a year ago, <laughs> right? You know that when we go, go one more slide up. One more, one more. Yeah. So the Mickey up there, the little town Mickey, that is the face that you see everywhere. They do that in all their treats and their sweatshirts. I mean, that is iconic. So I love that they made that as like the town center piece. But when we go back now, two slides. So sorry. We have the Mickey and Minnie's house. They're pumpkins, we've got the ears, Minnie's got her witch hat. The detail going around is just adorable. And if you've been to Toontown, and you know, we always have Mickey and Minnie's house. Mm -hmm. How cute to not do a house, but to do them as a pumpkin with the ears as where they live. And the detail, the little spider hanging off her hat, the cute little bow. I mean, who wouldn't want this? I just think this is adorable. Mm -hmm. And then here's the first accessories. So we've got Mickey and Minnie dressed up. And then we've got Donald and Pluto dressed up. And they're tussling over a something or other. Bucket of candy. Is it a bucket of candy? I can't see sideways. And then we want to finish it off. So we want to give you some street lights, some little pumpkin topiaries, and then of course the little town center pumpkin. This is a great little start 
vignette good to go you know for people that may want to get into Halloween but don't like the scary Halloween that they do that we do this is a fun cute great way to start mm -hmm. all right we can go to the next all right so for peanuts village we did not do um, a house this year we just did two accessories and they're meant to go with the Halloween so if you look in the book how these are set up um, Last year we did the haunted house, we did the trick-or-treaters, and the little treat for Woodstock with a pumpkin. Well, now we've got the World, World War I flying ace, which is right in the movie, and then we have the great pumpkin with Linus and Sally, um, which is a very important scene in that movie. All right, Nightmare Before Christmas. So we had a little gap last year um, the Lizard House was supposed to come out last mid-year, but because of COVID, um, we held off on some items and waited to release them to this year. So we've had a gap without a building for a year. So the Lizard House, <clears throat> I've been told, because I haven't seen this movie in a long time, it's a backdrop piece. It's not one of the you know main pieces like we did when we launched this, but it's more of a, a background piece. But it's definitely in the movie. And, you know, we've sort of done Halloween Town there, and now we're moving to Christmas Town. And how excited is he that he's going to Christmas Town? Look at his face. <laughs> so, uh, the accessory last year was a Jack going to Christmas looking into the tree, and now he's on his little car ready to roll. All right, a Grinch. This just grows leaps and bounds every year. We can't keep up. So we now have the stocking house. And what's cute about this, it literally looks like that little stocking. Somebody went tink, 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 and put a little nail up there. There's actually a little movement to that stocking. Um, and then we've got the stockings for sale and a Who's Perfect Stocking Stuffer to go with it. Hot property. So, in Adam's family, we've been asked and asked for Uncle Fester's house, so now we have that. And this is him doing his gardening when he's doing the garden transfusion. People love mm -hmm. Uncle Fester. Elvira. So this is kind of an interesting story. We were at a Halloween show mm -hmm. in Long Beach. And Stefan was there as showcase, and I was there as Department 56. And her real name is Cassandra something. Peterson. 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 Okay, Cassandra Peterson. She was there doing a book signing. Doesn't do this when she goes out. She was just how she looks in real life. Lovely woman. Well, guess what? She collects villages. <laughs> So she came over and met us, and her PR person talked, and it took a, a little over a year to make this happen, but um, we little formed a little partnership with her. So we have Elvira's house. This is scaled tall enough that it could go into your Halloween display, but it's not as thick of a building. It's more like Adam's family right. house, yeah. okay? But it's finished off on the back. But, you know, her dog, Gonk, is her sidekick, and I think uh, our artist did a really great job interpreting her as the accessory. So I'm excited. We have Elvira in our villages now. So for the Munsters, we've been asked and asked to do the coach. So we did. And now we have a carriage house to go along with 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Now we will move to Halloween. Okay. So for Witch Hollow, which are kind of our witch hat houses, we have the Cryptic Cave Crystals. What this doesn't show you when you're looking at it in the catalog is that that crystal ball up top changes colors. It goes from orange to purple to green very slowly, mm -hmm. very magically. And the accessory does the same thing. Again, it's just kind of hard to capture that when you're looking at it just in art. Lots of details on the site too, some extra crystal balls, yep. hanging crystals. Does the accessory connect to the house so they're synchronized or do they just... They are separate. Alright, 
So, with the popularity of doing peanuts in Christmas Lane, we also have Trick or Treat Lane, so why not do a peanuts Trick or Treat Lane house? Sort of the same concept. You've got the cute little house. Those lit leaves are um, like little fall leaves. They're very fun. This one comes with three separate accessories that are that same ceramic decal, kind of looks like people would set those up in front of their house. And then the three-dimensional accessory is Snoopy's Treat No Tricks. And the fall leaves string is also available as its own accessory it as is. well, so you can expand that to the yard and everything. It is. So very cute house. Again, you need to see this in person. I, I, I will admit that this slide is not super good, um, but in person it's adorable. All right, for the Day of the Dead, we have two new pieces. We have the Day of the Dead Remembrance, and we have the Day of the Dead Crypt. I think the crypt is really, really nice. Um, they did a really pretty job on that. Yeah. Does it show the accessory too, the, the dogs, or? That's later. later. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have sort of a seaside Halloween piece. This is bigger than it appears. It's actually on a base about this big. Yeah, yeah. It's maybe not a full-size house, but it's it's bigger than you would think. It's not like a small accessory. And then we've got the tubing Save Our Soul, where he's going down you know, the river, and you've got the creepy arms coming out to grab him. But this, seriously. <laughs> seriously. She's got the shirt on. We got the license to do the Anaheim Haunted House. Now, if you've been to Disney World, their haunted house is more of a castle. This is our haunted house here in Anaheim. And, I mean, Scott did an amazing job. He got this thing down to the T. All of these little pieces here, I mean, you feel like you're there. The vanity shot, or the glamour shot, I should say, in the catalog is exquisite. Um, there are lights at the base of the piece that flash on it mm -hmm. to give it kind of that really creepy glow. And then the hitchhikers who, if you've ridden the ride and you're coming out and you're looking in the mirror, you're trying to see which one is with you in your car, are the ones out front. And they're a bit oversized, so they're a nice size. Yeah. Um, I couldn't be happier with how this came out, and we the excitement on this has been huge. Stefan did a really nice job, job featuring this in our Halloween display, and everybody that walked up to it, you know, it's not cheap, but when they walked up to it, they were like, that's worth it. Yeah, and the wrought iron is, is metal, so you can feel it. It's, it's really, really great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely incredible. All right, so <laughs> the movie It, which is a Stephen King movie, has this creepy clown named Pennywise. I think he's going to do pretty well, though. We do well with these little creepy characters, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the Grim Reaper, the Angel of Death, um, that other clown, the joke's over. You like clowns or you hate clowns? Mm -hmm. I personally hate clowns, but this is really creepy and good for Halloween. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get to accessories. All right, so last year we did the Halloween jack-o'-lantern lit fence that just had the little pumpkins going across. Really cute for nightmare, just cute for anything in Halloween. Now we have the little corners. You can actually take it around a building and those light up. Fencing, never can have enough little fences. I think the orange and purple would also be really, really cute with the new Disney pumpkin town, right? Because it's all orange and purple. Mm -hmm. So those are brand new, and then we have the creepy village street signs. And I think those are the ones that went more with Day of the Dead. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's how I felt about 2020. How about you? <laughs> Just <laughs> a bummer year. So there's our Frankenstein water tower, which I think is quite fun. And this is a new set of black and orange sisal trees that light up with white lights. Very clean, very nice. Does anybody know if the monster has a name? Everybody called him Frankenstein, but that was the doctor. The actual monster is not Frankenstein. It's just called the monster. It's a monster. Well, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new Halloween gate. 
and a new Fright Night lit base. Now on that lit base, you could put some accessories up mm -hmm. on it if you wanted to. It's not big enough to put a house, but if you wanted to put that next to a house and put some little characters up there, you could definitely yeah. do that. All right, so I didn't see much of this anymore when my kids were younger, you know, it was kind of funny to smash pumpkins. Well, I didn't think it was funny, but people did it if you left your jack-o'-lanterns out overnight. So this is the how jack-o'-lanterns look on November 1st, all smashed. I love the cloud of black cats. You know, we've had a murder of crows. What else have we had? But it's when you have a group of cats, it's called a clouder of black cats. And those are just so cute and very well priced. Hand delivered mail. Got the creepy hand coming out there. Here's the autumn leaves. So we did a little strand of autumn leaves. If you have a fall set up, you could actually put these on your fall buildings. You could put them, you know, throughout uh, a tree. Mm -hmm. um, they're very cute. And then we have a new lit black garland, which you could add to a trick or treat lane house if you wanted to. Or fence. Or fence. Two new street lights. We have the little purpy, purple, creepy country street lights, and then the purple street lights. They're meant to be like that. Just Halloween and creepy. The Day of the Dead has a new garland. What we have found with Day of the Dead is everybody's doing a vignette with that. So all the little reeds and signs and just the little stuff, they're all buying because they want to really fill it out and make it look like its own little village. Yeah. I apologize, these signs are the ones that go with the Day of the Dead. They've got the purple color to it, and the signs make more sense with Day of the Dead. The other ones are for the regular village. But these dogs, how cute are they? So we've got, and the, the big, I think he's maybe a lab. He's a lot bigger, obviously, than the little guy. But those have done super well. Even for people that aren't Day of the Dead, they just think they're yeah. so fun the way they're dressed up. Okay, the Dark Shadows Backdrop Tree. Not the most favorable photo of this, but this tree just comes straight out. It's not dimensional. So if you set up your village on a shelf, and you don't have a lot of room, you know, building tree, can't do both, right? This can go behind. And it's a great tree for that price and a nice height at 14 inches. So you need a 14 inch shelf to put that on. And then the haunted slime tree, you know, it's kind of gross, but slime's coming off of it. I think pieces from long ago it would go with if you have some of the older Halloween. It goes well with the boat house. It goes well with the boat, yeah. yeah. It does. All right, now we're into the Christmas cross product. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so funny. And if you were here in November when I did the sneak peek. I think we showed a little tidbit of this so people mm -hmm. kind of figured out where we were going. But these little 2021 snowmen have kind of taken off. We're doing an annual. Then we have Fido's Christmas Getaway. You know, dogs are like our kids, right? Why not decorate the dog's house? Mm -hmm. That is not a lit accessory, um, but it is a decorated dog's house. Very cute. <laughs> All right, you're gonna see a lot with cardinals. And if you know the story about a cardinal, it's you know remembering a loved one. And so um, we do well with cardinals as a company. And um, you know, at Christmas time and all year long, we think of our loved ones that we've lost. But cardinals kind of are the remembrance bird that makes us remember that. So these are resin. So we have the little um, holiday hedges, and then we also have the holiday tree. The Cardinal Christmas Gate um, is Darling, and you've got the little bird there out in front of the fence. The Lit Christmas Vignette, this is also very, very cute. Now that does light up. Mm -hmm. The street light lights up. Um, just a nice piece to put next to a building, just to kind of round it out. Then we have, you know, we've had the flamingos, right? And the flamingos have always been fun. Well, now we have the cardinals. Now, to me, those would be perfect to put with the little trailer home and, you know, stick them out in front. Then we've got the Christmas cardinal bench. So you've got another place for your sitting people to sit. And then we have the Christmas cardinal fence. All right, then we have a pony I love. And we have a new mailbox. We have a new rocking horse, just as a little figure. 
um, a new reindeer. Last year we did the little peppermint pups where the two dogs were running with a little candy cane in her mouth. Well, now we've got a kitten. We did a little set of Christmas bunnies and I love rabbits, so I'm really, really specific on the way the faces are. They, do, they look mean there, they don't in person. They look, they, yeah, they look sweet and dear. So I will promise you that because the bunny face to me, I'm all about the bunny face. And then we had the little um, the Christmas fox uh, face off, which is fun. We have the little owl, which could go in Harry Potter, right? Yes, it could, because of this white. And then we have the little white Christmas swans and the Christmas doves. So lots of little stuff to add into your village displays. <clears throat> These photo photographed horrible, but in the Christmas lit acrylic in the catalog, we've done the entranceway and all kinds of things to really feature that Christmas palace we did. We now have an angel, which somebody, I think yesterday maybe when I was here, said, was it here? I don't know. This whole month has just been one big blur. But the angel might even be nice out in front of one of the churches, right? Um, <clears throat> we also have the road curved and straight, and it all lights up. All right, so fall, you know, we're on this roll. We're doing these fall pieces and everybody was so excited to have something in between Halloween and Christmas. And then we didn't do a building this year. Boo hoo, right? But I'm hoping we'll do one next year and we have some new accessories to augment what you already have. So we have the little Harvest Farms kid, which is the little goat, the little um, Halloween or uh, fall buckets with the sunflowers, and then the little pumpkin stand. So stuff to put with the fall pieces. Two new darling, darling street lights. I love both of them. I love the gingerbread the most though because I love the gingerbread uh, lane. Um, these light up darling. You got the two little cookies, the red and white stripe going down, little tinsel. I mean, they did a lot on these. They're not boring at all. And then the red <clears throat> with the green wreaths I think is really cute too and can go in several places. So we had some frosted hedges and we retired them and everybody was so sad so we brought them back. So they're a little bit different than we did before but it is a set of two and they're about six and a half inches long. So nice little entranceway. And remember Christmas Lane is going to be really big and fun this year. Mm -hmm. That's where they belong. Oh, go back one, one sec. All right, and then we brought back our little luminaries. Now, Luna's luminaries from last year retired, but the accessory is still available. And the way they made those luminaries look was really, really good and better than the ones we did before. So these are similar to those. Does that make sense? All right, so we need some path. So we did a new limestone road, straight and curved, and it's a nice size. You know, it's not itty bitty, so people could stand next to each other, even though they're not supposed to. <laughs> Six feet apart. Six feet apart. <laughs> but this, <gasps> this looks like you just want to <laughs> take that right off the side. Pieces are a really nice size. I mean, again, you can put elves next to each other, even though they should be standing next to each other. And if you and put the four piece. of these together, it looks like a pie. <laughs> yeah. well, and you would know that because you, you were setting this stuff up, but everybody that came to the showroom in Atlanta, they went, oh, it looks so real, oh, it's so big. It does, it does. So this is really, really good, really, really good. All right, so last year we did the partridge and the pear and the two turtle does, and the question was, are you going to do more? Yes, we did. So now we have three and four. So we have the three French hens and the four calling birds. And if you're doing Twelfth Night, mm -hmm. might work, right? So far. So far. I love the cardinal pine tree. This is one of those big, fluffy, chunky pine trees, and it's just got those cardinals just perfectly placed. The crab apple tree with ribbon is good. But then we have one, go back one just a second. We have the yellow ribbon oak, and that's a nod to our service people. Peppermint striped trees, these are darling for North Pole. They're really, really cute in the red and white. Then we have a new um, winter's frost bare branch tree. This is nice too. The, the colors, when you look at these in the catalog, 
are not doing justice to the way they light. They look very primary, mm -hmm. but these are not primary. They're they're more Christmas colors, yeah. right? I mm -hmm. mean, the blues right. and the, they, nice. they're really really pretty. As these don't show as they do either. Um, we had that flocked tree from a couple years ago. Those are the same lights, and they look a lot better in person. That's it. Hmm? That's it. Did it not say thank you at the end? Nope. Ooh. It says end of show. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So that was it. <laughs> that was it. We're at the end of the show. Back of the book. <laughs> so, as you can see, we have some great things this year. Mm -hmm. Our uh, artists were all working from home last year. Um, they'd come in occasionally to have meetings, but we really all were separate. And to think that they were able to pull off a launch like this without being able to just run into each other's offices, which they do, is amazing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so there you have it. So most of all the core village, which is like North Pole Snow Village, you know, blah, blah, blah. That will all come in March. The classic brands, the hot properties, those come in in the summertime. The accessories, for the most part, are also in in March. So we got you covered. We will have this stuff out to you early. And does anybody have any questions for me before I turn this over to Stefan?